Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. I am Edwin Hernandez, Grasshopper Specialist at Ship Diver. In today's video, we will finish explaining one of our most popular topics, which is JSON objects. But this time, we will focus on linking these JSON objects to our online applications and also on constructing JSON objects so that we can extract information out of our Grasshopper models in the most efficient way. But before we get started, Please remember to subscribe and to like this video as it really helps our channel. And if you want to learn more about what you can do with ShapeDiver, don't forget to visit our website. So let's get started. In the previous video about JSON objects, we finished by looking at our Rift Stable Configurator, the one we created in our webinars and we left the open question about how to link these JSON objects that we created in Grasshopper to our online applications. So how do I send these JSON objects from my definition to the actual online application that the users are looking at? To answer this question, let's have a look again at our online app of our Rift Stable. So here we have our Rift Stable configurator. So as you can see here in our parameters list, we have our JSON. This is the JSON that gets affected by our control points. And the way we give access of this JSON to our online application is through a shape diaper text input. So this component that we have here in the inputs area, this component creates a text field in our online application. If we double click on it, we can set a default and we can set a maximum length. So the maximum length that this one has is 10,000 characters. So if your JSON starts to become very complex and it starts to have more than 10,000 characters, then the next solution is to use the ShapeDiver text file input where you can actually create a JSON file. And this file format is the one that you can send to the ShapeDiver text file input component. In this case, if we double click this component we get the different allowed formats. So of course we have the JSON format and the maximum file size. So again, if your JSON starts to become very complex, then you have to use the text file input. But if your JSON is very simple, so for example, this JSON is very simple, we can just use the shape text input. So we can copy this text, minify it, so that means to compress it and put it in a single line there is some tools online that you can use to do that. So you can just minify the text and put it in, in a single line. You could also do it directly in Grasshopper with some normal text tools. This is then our text in a single line and then we can paste that in our shape diver text input. Again, double click in the component. We paste there and that will be used as the default value that our definition is going to use. So if we input this in our JSON, then this parameter is what will send the information to our Grasshopper definition. And now we have connected our definition to our online application. Now, if you are gonna use the text file input, what you can do is combine it with the text input. So you could input here an other text input. And then inside this one, you're gonna put a URL where your JSON file is being stored. A second option would be to actually directly send a file to your text file input option. So how does that look? If we look again in our configurator, in our restable configurator, you will get here a button that you can click on. In this case, we're talking about a shape. So we are looking for a DXF, but in our JSON structure example, we would be looking for a that JSON file and that's the one that we will import inside our online configurator. For local testing, we can just put a file path component and then select our file in our local folder. Again, this is just for local testing. We can input this file inside our URL input and as output, we will get the text that we have set in our file. In this case, it's the same text that we have here in our text input component, so we will get the same result. But basically with this, instead of affecting directly a text in Grasshopper, you could, for example, affect the file itself, and then that will get reflected in your Grasshopper definition. 
This is mainly relevant if you are working with very big or very complex data structures. Now, so far we have accessed and obtained information from a JSON. But what if we want to do the opposite? What if we want to actually output information from our definition as a JSON format or to construct a JSON object? So for that, we have a component called the ShapeDiver JSON Construct component. And this component will take any kind of data, grasshopper data, and put it inside a JSON definition. So the simplest example would be to add just a string, a text. So for example, we add a name. This name can go inside our data input. And as an address, I will put name. As a result, we get a JSON, which contains one single attribute, the name attribute, and our value. But we could go even more complex with this. We could add, for example, a color. And then convert this into a JSON as well. So we use again our shape diver construct, we put this into our data, we put as another color, and we get as result an attribute called color, so the same one that we have here, and then it gives us the type of information and the data that it contains. And the data in this case is the red, green, and blue factors of our color. Now we can also start to merge different JSONs. So for example, we have the first JSON and we can merge this JSON by inputting inside our object input and then we will get a JSON with two attributes, the attribute name and the attribute color. And with that, we can continue adding and adding more depth inside our JSON. Now, what happens, for example, if we add a box inside our construct component? Let's add this as a data. And then as we get as a result is a type box and data which contains plane and extents of our box. You can continue checking other kind of information. So you could add, for example, a curve, or you could add also a surface. And this component, the construct component, will make its best to extract as much information from this geometry and put it inside a JSON structure. Now we can also construct a JSON by using data trees. So for example, if we add an end one component, which creates automatically a data tree, and then we start to add different data inside our branches. So for example, we could have a list of names. We could have, for example, this same box and another kind of data. So for example, a point. And this is in different branches. Then we add this inside our data input that, as you can see, is asking for a data input as a tree. So we have here our tree with three different branches. And then we add addresses. So in this case, the address has to be a list of addresses. So for each branch in our tree, we're going to have an item which represents the address. So in this case, the first one would be, for example, names. The next one would be the box. And the last one will be the point. So in this case, we have three addresses and three branches. So we input that into our address. And now we get a more complex JSON structure, which contains the attributes names, which is a list. So that's why we have a tree here, because we want to have everything inside my branch zero inside the names attribute. Then we have a box and finally we have a point. So this point gets converted just in simply three coordinates, three numbers. Now we could also create more complex addresses like we did when we were getting information where you go directly to where you want to exactly position this information. So in this case, we can use the first example. So we said that we wanted the name attribute, but we could go more specific with our address. So for example, we could go here and add team members and then go that name. So that will add an object called team members. And inside this object, we'll add an attribute called name. And then we could, for example, add instead of a just an attribute, we could add a list of values. So again, that would mean an array so that our name is positioned in the first item of our array. So we get team members name and then we get inside an array our name. 
Now, if we have a list of names like we have here in this example, so we add this in our data structure, then we will need to add three addresses to our address input. So we graph this so that we get a tree and then of course as a warning we get that the number of branches is not the same than the number of addresses so that means that we need to add an additional of two addresses to match our three so we will just copy and paste this two times more and then we know that our next uh, name will go inside our index number one and the next one inside our index number two we convert this into a list so multi nine data and then we don't have the warning anymore. And then we get each of our names in the name attribute inside team members as an array, so as a list of values. Here we have this file, which you will be able to download in the description of this video, where we show how to construct a JSON with different data types. So we have points, we have strings, we have lines, intervals, planes, north surface, colors, boxes, transformations, etc. So if we start to check each of these JSONs, we start to see how the JSON starts to grow and become more and more complex. So we have a list of points here, which is four points. And then we have the attribute some points. Therefore, we get a list of lists. So we get the main list, which is some points. And then inside this main list, we get arrays of three numbers. So three numbers because it's the three coordinates of our points. Then we go to the next one, which is just a number. Then the next one, which is just a string and so on. So you can see how each of these data types gets converted into a JSON extractor. So we construct here all these complex JSON. So as you can see, it's a very extensive JSON. But now we can also get information out of it. So we have here the same output, so the same JSON. And then we want to get from it some color. So this sum color, if we check the result, is going to give us the type color and the data, so the RGB values. And then we are using here the shape diver JSON convert component that we saw already by using points. But now you can also use this also for other types. So for example, the color type, the box type. So we have here type box. And then when you use this convert component, it will automatically go from our JSON to a box or from our JSON to a column or from our JSON to a NARF surface. So you can save time in the conversion from JSON to actually a grasshopper data type. Now what you have to have into account is that of course this JSON has to have the structure that is seen here. So it has to have a type, it has to have a data attribute and inside this data attribute it has to have all the attributes that are needed for this specific data type. So for example, the NARF surface contains a rotational attribute, a order attribute, points counts attribute, etc. Of course, one simplest one will be the color, which contains just in the data three numbers, the RGB values. But then of course, in the box, you would need to add a plain attribute and an extend attribute. So if you find this useful to have a JSON structure and then convert it directly into a grasshopper data type, then you can use these components. However, we normally create our own data structure. So we think how a data structure would be ideal for each particular case of our projects. And then we extract the data individually and we create the desired output. Now, if you have created a JSON, now you also want to extract this JSON from your Grasshopper definition. So we already show how to get this JSON from your online configurator, but now we also need to send information to the online configurator. So to do that, we have this component called the Shape Diver Data Output, where you can input this JSON inside this data output, and then through our API, you will be able to access this JSON format. Now remember to add a name to your data output so that you will be able to recognize what you are trying to get. So for example, here you could just test. And then when you go to the API, you will request the data output called test test. The same happened with the inputs. So the example that we saw with the inputs of the parameters, you have to also name your parameters. 
so that you are able to also access these parameters easily. So you will also add here, for example, points, JSON. And then this name is the one that you will look for when you are using our API. The same happens with the file. So you will need to give it a name, points JSON file, for example. And that's the name that you will use to send the information from your online configurator to the actual Grasshopper definition. And that's it. We have already explained the concept of JSON, JSON objects, JSON arrays. We have also seen how to create a simple JSON. Then we have gone deeper into our JSON and created more and more complex structures. We have also seen how to send these JSONs from your online configurator to Grasshopper and also how to construct them and send data from your Grasshopper definition to the online configurator. I hope this JSON concept helps you out in the construction of your Grasshopper definitions. And if you like what you learned today, please click on that like button. Remember that all relevant links and download files will be in the description of the video down below. And if you don't want to miss out any of our future videos, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you later in another video. Thanks again for watching.